We are at the Bywater Creek and we're going to take you around and show you what we've found. And we've seen some crazy watches. Oh yeah. But which is the craziest? But which is the craziest? That is it. I think it's one of you two actually. I think Andrew's a crazy watch. Welcome to About Effing Time. We are at Dubai Watch Week, the end of day one. Oh, this yes. is my first day in Dubai. Same. This is my first time at Dubai Watch Week. You're a veteran of Dubai. You're a veteran of Dubai Watch Week. Yeah. This is first. First Dubai first, Watch first Week. Dubai Watch Week. Yeah, but my second, it's, how did you feel? How did you, how did you find it? I loved it. I thought, I thought it was, and, but so the, the brief was, this is different from all the other watch shows. This is much more friendly and much more open. Uh, but I didn't feel like that gave me much of an idea of what it's going to be like. Yeah. When I arrived, it felt smaller than what I expected. But I feel like you just have to search for the bits. You have to it's, it's all in this this ring in the finance district. Uh, but yeah, you have really to discover impressed. here. You have it's, to discover. It, it really is one of those. Honestly, I'm exactly the same as you. I, I was I was told, oh, it's all different. It's all It's all a lot more kind of friendly you know dubai is all about um watch lovers and, and and i was like yes this is amazing but i was like come on i've heard that before i've heard it from all the other events yeah and i came here and i was just like the, every brand every anyone here hey what's on your wrist i mean we've seen some stonkers of watches but it's also the other amazing thing we're looking at dubai watch week and i'm like going tick 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 this is something that is a watch lovers heaven. And something happened with Rolex this time that didn't happen at Watches of Wonders. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Right, what's on the wrist? They, they, George. They, they slapped him again. <laughs> they slapped him again. <laughs> George, what's on your wrist? Um, I have got the um, Bad Mother um, FU second, uh, second, second B347. Uh, we launched it um, a few days ago um, and absolutely absolutely love it on my wrist true fu watch it's a true fu watch the tr weird we both launched watches that are gray is that titanium yeah gray titanium with a blue dial in the last week that's well just i'm strange. annoyed i'm annoyed because yeah. you've sold the one that was on your wrist I have. And, <laughs> and so this was the <laughs> other thing so no no i need to start launching watches but this is how <laughs> how desirable that watch was and when I'm not shilling his own watch, but that's his nice. He had though, to George. sell the watch on his wrist because I was like, "Yes, I've, I'm bringing my own watch." Hey, Andrew, what are you bringing? He was just like, Whoa. Yeah. I had it during the day, so I, I was, was like, was wearing our new uh, Night Surfer El Primero, which we launched yesterday. Adrian was kind enough to come to the launch last night. I wasn't on, on a terrace. George was on a private jet. I, I, no, I was uh, NFI'd. Yeah. <laughs> not fucking racist. Uh, we uh, did that last night, but then today, while I got to wear it during the day, Zenith came and kindly took it off me during the day, at which time I realized this was not only, there was, there was a silver lining to this robbery, and that is that I could then put Zach's Piaget out the That is a stonking watch. Oh my that gosh. Is. So yeah. what, which one before he kind of stamps over it what yeah. Alta Plano. <laughs> this is the 900p Alta Plano. it's in rose gold it is 3.65 millimeters i mean even saying thick sounds wrong thin uh this color scheme of rose gold and this this badass kind of black it's always been the Alta Plano that I, i've lusted after zach snaffled it i don't think it's Zach standing right here he's uh still got he's his standing specs guard on. <laughs> yeah standing guard it's dark he's still got his specs on in case you're wondering uh, so I, I took this chance to put this on and I, I really have never lost it after thin and small watches. This is 38 millimeters, but I, I'm going to struggle to, to give this back to Zach. Bit, bit of a bit of flex. What do you want? So I have, oh, I feel so boring now. I need to just launch the watch. <laughs> you are Captain Boring. <laughs> I am, yeah, look at my name. <laughs> I am wearing my uh, two-tone GMT. You're wearing a Dubai watch. Well, this this is my most Dubai watch. Yeah, is. This, this is, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit fancy, a little bit flash. Not, not horologically or value wise but visually it's, it's quite a flashy watch it's, but i like it it's fun and i feel like it goes with our yeah, attire so can i ask you a quick ask question about that. No, no, no. so <laughs> this is this is a trend if you if you think you're at the top of the game then then, then we have to um <laughs> show some more shin show some shin no no, 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 no please please fucking let, hate let's feet. go back hand but up, the, um, hand but, up. Um, <laughs> hey but these these uh i'm gonna do a quick kind of uh Oh yes. oh yes. Aether, thank you very much for creating A -E -T -H -E -R. these. A-E-T-H-E-R. 
um, Killer. creating lovely. these for us. Um, Can I just mention this? Because people, uh, the lovely Robin Swithin Mac was kind enough to come over and say, United wankers, when we walked in in matching clothes. At which time I wanted to point out to Robin, while it looks like this is all coordinated and we have a stylist, we do not. And George also, bless you, George, but when we turn up to a shoot away from home, we are generally issued clothing. Is that not right, Adrian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is <laughs> it's really something uniform. where we get a little plastic bag and there might have been a WhatsApp or two saying, guys, incoming, something, some smoke show. Uh, and then we get Maybe here and we're color. given the clothes. Maybe it's, it's like when, you, you, when you're a kid, you go on family holiday and your dad gives you <laughs> your all bright orange beanies to wear so you can see where you are. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. There's a guy. <laughs> but this is awesome. And honestly, we have been wearing uh, the Bad Upping Time stuff ever since we started the show. I have never been asked about merch more than this. Yeah. So yeah. if you want this jacket to exist, we will go to Ether and we will say we want to make more. But we, I, I had a guy trying it on just here before. He, we wanted to take a picture in it. So, George, you've nailed this. I well, love this top. Honestly, it, 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 it is 38 awesome. degrees and we've been sweating. Yeah, I, my, my armpits are <laughs> melting. Oh, please, please, please. <laughs> and, okay. my, and my crotch. So I think the big question around Dubai Watch Week is why does Dubai Watch Week exist? Yeah. We, the, 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 the Swiss watch industry yeah. is the dominating factor in the watch world and we are miles away from that look it started in 2015 and it's been going for eight years and this is the sixth edition of the fair i my view is and i think the intention of dubai watch week because it, this is not a commercial event no transactions are happening in any of the booths down here there are there are no retailers here there's no one able to buy a watch we joked in rolex the thanks for the presentation we'd like <laughs> to buy one <laughs> yeah. And he, he looked awkward. And I'm like, no, no, we know you can't. But this is not a... Com it doesn't have the smell of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a different smell. It has the smell of... It's got a, a smell of money, money from a different perspective. It still has <laughs> it, uh, 100% has the smell of money. Uh, but no, the, the intention behind this was to build um, passion and yeah. education around it. And that sounds very fluffy and very salesy. But honestly, my, the one proof of this is Rolex, which is just here. And the reason that sounds fluffy is because of our experiences. Not to bash the Swiss yeah. uh, watch events, love them, watch the wonders, please invite me back. <laughs> but but when they say, oh, this is about education, there's a very much there's very much a sales it's push. It's still exit through the gift shop at the end. Exactly, yeah, yes. yeah. Whereas, Whereas here, here, yeah. Um, when a brand like Rolex invites you into the booth very warmly, yeah. we, I had a 20% chance of us getting in at all. I, I flagged that as but, we walked uh, up. It, it, as soon as we get in, it was truly educational. And I think that's an example of how much this is a place that welcomes you, educates you, and doesn't have that uh, dynamic, the transactional dynamic. And those three reasons alone are worth coming, in my opinion. And with Rolex, interestingly, if you go to a watch show, they will typically only show you the new models, yes. the latest models. Even if the model has, was discontinued last year, you will not see it, you will not talk about it. Whereas here, they have the heritage pieces, which typically you would only see at press events around a certain particular watch. Yeah. This is open to the public which is a different stance. I mean, they let us in. That is yes. a different stance. That's true. So that's my Rolex. view. I, 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 treat, I think that it is purported to be an educational experience. I would say I'm giving you a tick to buy Watch Week. Yeah. I learned some stuff today and I felt a different offer from the brands. It is, it is not a, please come in, sir, assess how much you look like you're worth, look at what's on your wrist, uh, there was none of that. It's a very different dynamic, and yep. that makes it interesting. But that is my take, gents. George, what do you think? I I agree with you. I I think we we talked about the sense of money, but it is people's. I've been risk spotting. Oh my! And Lord. there has been some. There has been some watches that you just go, how does that exist? I didn't know that that existed. But it's also the other thing is, every brand just feels happy. It, it, you walk That's into such a good any point. brand and you're like going, where the hell is this? Not, oh my God, we've got X amount of press coming through. Oh my yeah. God, we've got this, we've got this. We can yeah. see you for five minutes. Yeah. These guys are just like, hey, how are you doing? And it's not They've got us. time to chat as it's well. It's not us. No. I've been watching other people. I've been sitting there watching. I've had some time to sit and I've sat and watched other people just chatting with you know, the CEO. CEO of the business or the head of design and yeah. and, and just not knowing that they're head of design, yeah. just chatting to them and saying, hey, tell me about this. That for What me, do you do here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but this is what I love about this Dubai Watch Week. And I always thought it was kind of all about bling. It is. 
but it's not. It is very much. It's for the people. It is the mm. difference of of a watch show. Watch shows normally are. We want the press to be talking to the outside world. This is insular. It's kind of going into the watch world and saying, "We will develop your passion for watches." It is changing though a little bit, and this is this is the there is quite a few launches. Sorry, uh, is that is that launches? launches? No, 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 not. <laughs> there are twenty launches at this event, which points to the fact that the Swiss are going. Shit. They're getting something right. Now we've got to start bombing and, and that's not like it's that it was 20 this time and last year was 18. This is a significant jump. I think there in, in, three last year. Yeah, there's a significant jump in, in watch brands uh, allocating this slot for, for a product launch. <laughs> so uh, how should we do this? I, I, I want to take these guys around. And... I, I just wanted to know what you thought. Yeah, to your turn. Because... You, oh, right. you said, hey, I'm going to turn to you. Oh, okay. I'm, turn to you. Okay. I'm really <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> come on. Uh, guys, it's nice to give a shit about my opinion. I, I, I don't give a shit about your smelly feet, but I... I Do like... my feet smell? They don't smell. Oh, Jesus Christ, and we're outside, aren't we? Oh, oh, no, many jokes. Oh, no. It's so great. I don't smell. Oh, I can't smell. I'm so tempted to smell that that I would just regret that immediately. Just for the show. So uh, my opinion on, on this is I, I, I don't like the idea that uh, uh, the, the, the Swiss industry holds all the power for watches. And we've seen a massive spike in activity in British watchmaking. Uh, we've seen so many. Uh, there's a big uh, spotlight on Germany, a big spotlight on, on Japan. I like the idea that, that we're branching out of this, this concept that everything has to be Swiss. And I feel like Dubai Watch Week previously, it, it, I've known, known of it. but it's a fringe event. It's a fringe event, but I feel like this could be something massive, yeah. especially with the level of watches that are being launched here. Yeah, it's quite incredible, yeah. and the brands that are here. This isn't some small mall shopping mall thing. No. This is legit. Well, we, that's what I thought. We've got was Rolex, we've got yeah. AP, we've got Van Cleef, we've got Tudor, uh, Chanel, uh, Chanel, then Tag, Tag, Tag Heuer. Heuer. Yeah. Yeah, all the big Tag guys Heuer. are here. So you're probably wondering what we got up to today. Uh, so let's take you on a tour of what we've seen because we've seen some we've seen some crazy booths we've yeah. seen some crazy watches people like crazy people nice people yeah cool people okay but crazy because <laughs> I've been hanging out with these guys all day all oh, right so. okay <laughs> so the it's st the day started inauspiciously we were just gathering um, someone needed a drink Marcus needed a drink so we jumped up to this cafe to get some drinks for Marcus and sitting on these couches were two gentlemen and I saw something. I saw it, a huge, is it a signet ring? The one with the, the ring with the big yeah, chunk? Yeah, yeah. It's got a uh, precious stone on there. And then I thought, hang on a second. I see something peeking out from under the cuff. And it was a 37 millimeter yellow gold royal oak with a turquoise dial, which was just freaking ball. So Marcus is like punching me in the kidneys. Go, go on, dog, do it, go on, get that on the wrist. So I'm like, okay. So I just walked over, sat down with them, and and I tried this watch on, and that was my opening to, I suppose it was the first brand I interacted with, AP. AP is here, mm -hmm. very colourful, amazing booth, but that was where my day started. That's pretty epic. And, and and that's a, a factory dial, is it? It is a factory dial, yeah. That was a release in January from, from January this year. And it gave me the idea, maybe what we should do is have a running tally of, of what we agree to be the craziest watch we saw during the day. Because I started off with a flyer. I thought this could potentially be the craziest watch I see all yeah. day. So okay. I'm putting that as number one for now. But then we went to Gerard Perigo. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, and we we were there before <laughs> a launch. Tones. You were... We were there before a launch. We were. We arrived. They were doing this wonderful... Oh, hang up. Are we, are we allowed to talk about this watch? When's the embargo? Yeah, it's, 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 it's already it's happened. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. But... Yeah, are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, we are. So, the, um, well, what, what do we see, George? They were doing this press lunch. And they just went, oh, don't worry, come and have a look in. Look, this will probably get cut because George is going to veto it and kick me out of the group. But George not only has done limited editions with Gerard Perigo, but the Gerard Perigo Aston Martin Formula One racing team is sponsored by a, a, a little company called JCB that moves some earth every now and again. <laughs> a little bit. So just a couple of connections. George walks in, the everything that the ocean no, is the Yeah, the ocean's ocean part. And then the product designer yeah. from the brand. Clemence, that is an absolute rock star. Opened a box for us. Yeah. And just talked to, and it was just like that. And then, then it was the designer of the booth just went, oh yeah, go under and go and have a look inside. It was like, I was just like, this is... Yeah. What I would say to you is that is where brands just come and hug you. They just say, mm -hmm. hey, look, so and yes, tough. I know that you, you've, I've got a relationship with you, them, but on any other event, 
or anything there is always that kind of like hey you can't do this because we're doing this or we can't do yeah. this was very much like hey i'll just show you don't worry yeah the, the, and, the, and hey we'll the turn the box great. around for marcus to film it don't yeah. worry it's yeah it was very cool and now quick comments on that watch because we'll throw to it now this is a gerard perigo three bridges aston martin edition yeah. and this is the first ever Girard Perigo three bridges, but the bridges in green, yeah, which is Aston Martin green. I already had a Formula One um, racing thing on on the. That was so much fun. I crashed the car so many times. should be better. So cool. where do we where, where, where do we go to next? So we went from one designer that was Clemence over to Fabrizio from Bulgari. That was absolutely the inventor of the Fenissimo. I mean, one of those pieces that's the icon that is part of a lot of people's collections now. Yeah, and. He showed us something very special, mm. and uh, we kept him trying to break the glass, and and even the security there wasn't much. Gorgeous, much security, but that was amazing. Carbon gold perpetual calendar Opel okay, Finissimo, which and again he he talked about the rose gold, the solid rose gold bridges on the. Because uh, I said the yeah. best part of this watch is the case back, because at the front yeah. very sexy marble black, but flip it over and boom. Um, Mm. But he referenced John Player special. He, he yeah, did, did that. He read up to you. He referenced some really cool racing, some really good. This was one of those things. But the stand was awesome. And just how they were on that stand to us. It was like, Again, hey, hey yeah. guys, we. And, and then he was talking about our colors and talking, it was just, it was really. And I would say, as we held that carbon gold virtual calendar with the solid gold case back, I would say that that then edged out the AP for the craziest watch we'd seen at that point. Do you agree that that's yeah. the one? Yeah. Re regardless of price, yes. if you remove price, yes, I'd say it that. It could that potentially be the craziest watch. The, 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 the swirls of carbon, that, that yeah. was something marbling, just so it, sexy about that. It's got a stealthy and yet absolutely luxurious feel to it, so I reckon that goes to number one. Yeah. That thing's got real in it. Oh, blow, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was like going into the sweet shop, wasn't it? It's but both right. emotional wise yeah. and and seeing all of these colors everywhere. Summer that's on the really, watch. That's a really good analogy. I feel that with the Fubo, it, it isn't the same as going to. It doesn't have the same feel. It is like a sweet shop for adults. Yeah. Where all the price, where, where it's everything. What it felt like for me was when I go into um, on Carnaby Street, the G Shock store oh, on Carnaby Street in London yeah. you go and you think holy shit and there's just all these cool watches around that I get that same energy but for Hublot it's just with the next grade of of fun but the other thing is when and I'm not they are out of my price brackets but pricing I was surprised about with ceramic or with sapphire or you know, there was a few things where it was a massive shock, but I, I, that right. blue and white, mm. blue white mm. Unico uh, so, Big Bang Forty Two. You could yeah. stick that on a lollipop. And the other thing, as you said about pricing, was the Sapphire Big Bang Unico Forty Twos is a is is you were shocked at the pricing because after it's, holding the it's literally four hundred over four hundred thousand pounds cheaper. Although you you made a good point, it doesn't have the front facing micro rotor logo. Mic it doesn't have the turbulence. And, and to be honest, it isn't the watch without the bracelet because a bracelet no, is no, that no, holy shit strap. point. I didn't. You like... liked it? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Oh, you didn't. didn't. I like liked I liked summer on a watch. I, I, yeah. I for me, yeah. the blue and white was the other one. The sapphire was like it didn't feel like a hublot should. Be. It felt like a fake hublot. And that was it what made really annoyed me. It a rubber strap. And it also brings in a bit of a G-Shock feel with yeah, the clear rubber. And it, yeah. it could have it could have edged out the Bulgari, but it didn't. Yeah. And we were trying to kind of look at what edged out that. And it was like, yeah, Sapphire. And yeah. then it was just like, no. So which, which watch from Hublot are we choosing to put on the board? And where does it sit? I think the summer blue. I think yeah. the summer blue as well. Blue. Absolutely. But but it below below the Bulgari because the Bulgari is yeah. still. Yeah, and I think it's below the, the AP as well. Yeah. Now that that forever will be etched in my mind as the watch that you say in Bolt wore yeah. when I went on the event with him and on his black skin the blue and the white was just. Oh, that looks fire. I'm sorry, just... here's a name. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but also with the Hublot, uh, in the Hublot, in in the Hublot booth we had an experience. This this points oh, yeah. to a bit of a, a different edge here as well. So the brands really want you to interact with their point of difference and Hublot's point of difference from day one has been the art of fusion so what they did George and you did this not me but they they had these blocks of different materials and you could put them on a interactive panel and then it would you finish it it worked 
it brought them together. But the, the thing that bugged me is I was like, yes, this is amazing. And they said, oh, wait until the end. And I was like, they're just going, it's going to create a watch. Something's and I was like, this is amazing. I was like, AI Here's creating a, QR a watch. Code. I was like, this is amazing. Fuck's and sake. a QR code came up and I was like. <laughs> Moving on. We went across the road to a brand that I believe is growing in this guy. LUC. Yeah, so I feel like LUC, <laughs> I feel like Chopin alone, but I feel like it's one of those brands and perhaps a marketing team could be better or maybe I could be more wide-eyed about it. I feel like it's one of those brands that I always fall in love with at watch fairs. Mm -hmm. Outside of watch fairs, I forget about them. Yeah. But every time, Watchers Wonders, they were at one of the yeah, top yeah, of the list. I, I, I Dude, think they do. Is concerning. <laughs> it is. But there's just something intensely seductive, and it's so funny watching Astro. Seductive, do. that's exactly just, it. You get so into it, but then even an hour later, you've kind of forgotten about it. So I, I'm, I'm a massive sucker for a monopusher. A monopusher's chronograph, I love it. I love, especially when it's in the crown, or, or if it's just this, this odd little bubble above the crown. Yeah. And so I immediately saw this monopusher in the glass, and I thought, cool, I'm going to check that out. And then I looked closer, I thought, where's a chronograph? Yeah. There's no chronograph on it. And it's not a chronograph one to push it. It's a strike one. That's what it's called. <laughs> strike two, strike three. Yeah. So this is called the this is called the, the LUC Chopard uh strike one. And it's essentially I've never seen this this complication before, but it strikes on the hour. So it's not a minute repeater, it's just a single strike on the hour to tell you, kind of like what you have with your Casio watches when you have the, the hour chime. Yeah. Uh, and the mono pressure on the side is simply to turn this off and on. So it's, it's one of those things where, where 60,000 pounds is an obscene so amount of money, right? But when we get hands on with so many watches and people, brands come out with, oh, this is that, this is that. We're going to talk about one which has a ridiculous price later on. When someone turns around and says a watch this legitimately stunning of, of, of this build quality yeah. for 60,000 pounds, you think it makes sense. Yeah. And, and so I honestly fall in love I'm with this so thing. i you've come for show part kind of way <laughs> but uh, i always city. do i always do and, and they they, yeah. they have so much on on offer that i think is is stunning for me uh it wouldn't be that one it would be i think it's called the full strike with tourbillon so this is the model that won the aggie door at g g best g a few years ago and, and the the best part about this was uh when it won the gbhg it comes with a little acoustic sound box so that the sound oh, can be amplified cool. and i said oh should we get the sound box and he just looked at me and went uh no i'm good we, it, it's loud enough as it is. And then he held it up to my mic and she's those crystal tones. Nice. This makes me think a train's coming. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> so this watch now has that, that full strike repeater Award winning, but it also has a tourbillon and it's six times the price of yours at 360,000 Swiss francs. So, to me, that actually, given its award winning pedigree, I think it ousts the, the bulgari for me. So, I'm I putting that at the top of the table. I feel like he's really playing a game with just like, hey, don't worry, I'll go bigger than you. That's not this whole I, show. I like. I like, I know, but I like. But I so, like I'm your... looking at watches that I want to buy. Yeah. And I, I would legitimately. Or things that. Can... Or things that... <laughs> it's called the craziest watch of the day. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> You're doing it me. You're doing it me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm shopping. Moving on from this. Are we going to somewhere that I freaking oh, love? Oh, my God. Van, Van, Van. Oh, Van this was... Cleef. Van Cleef. Brilliance. What's that? No, there is something... I, I want each of us to say why... In all authenticity, this this fair blue this this stand blew us away. George, go. But if they blew us away and watched some wonders, and they've blown us away again. This stand, it was magical. It was amazing. It was Aladdin's cave. It felt yes very in, in, in such a way of the Middle East. You know these houses. They have these w gates, and they have. But then when you come in and you see this wonderful kind of, it was just mesmerizing. Yeah. It, was, it was another world. And there world. were mirrors which and created this illusion that it went forever in every direction. It was a good environment. But aside from that, there was a watch there that sums up the odd, I would say, unexpected appeal of Aglip and Apples, which is a, a watch called the Bridge of Love. And it- You're romantic. I know. So it has a man on the right and a woman on the left, and they are, and above the man is the minutes, and above the woman is the hours. Just teed off here. And so they're literally telling the time. 
but they've moved together towards a kiss on the bridge. But you can also activate that complication <laughs> on either side. You could, act, you could do it on demand, or when you buy the watch, you can have the watchmakers actually set the time. So just say you met your partner and your first kiss was at 11.59 on New Year's Eve, uh, and you can have it set so that once a day, the two figures come and meet at the time you first kissed your partner. Wow. That's cute. I like that. If let's race it. So where does it rank? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say number one. I'm going to uh, oh, really? number one above uh, Bulgari. Above Bulgari, because I feel that this is this is a really spectacular competition. Cool. Oh, actually, really I, 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 uh, yeah. Is oh. it above? Is it above LUC though? For you? And I yeah. I'd, the, the the finishing, the design, the romance of it. The the, the 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 poetry of it, I think, yes. is is really. Yes, you were very touched by it. I, did, I I love I love what they do. Like yeah. legitimately no, love what they do. I love what they do, but I still still Bulgari above. So on wow. my my you want numbers? But, but if if we're going one two three, honestly, they outstrip me. But I would Bulgari above. That's cool. me because it's still it's still in here. Cool. Number one. Let's do it. Okay. Right. Where where do we go to next? We we went from somewhere deeply. Exciting to somewhere that was not very exciting. Ah, oh, Tudor. Yeah. So it was exciting to me. Yeah, that's because George took all the exciting opportunities. No, sorry, you met your double. Yeah, this is this is true. I mean, he met his double, and I played as his double. So Tudor is one of the brands that didn't launch anything this year, and to be honest, that really stood out. It I'm really a massive did. fan of Tudor. It's I one of the brands that that I, I really talk about on my channel. Oh. Can we really Something that happened to you. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. I, I emailed them. I was like, guys, you're going to be there. Are you yeah. going to do something? No, we're not, not doing anything. And it, it really stood out as as something weird that, that they, they didn't do something. But um, um, the other thing is, I did something on their stand. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You did. So, oh, there well, you got a cap. Is. There it is. Oh, yes. So, George was challenged. To <laughs> he, looked like, time. he looked like a <laughs> naughty scout. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest mile or kilometer. And we were there rooting him on for like 30 seconds and then it just wasn't happening fast enough. Yeah. And then I went and got a smoothie and George was nearly killed himself. Do, I do, didn't do, realize do, do, that they, they had the gears set up the, on the hardest. Anyway, I can explain. But this is so damn cool and I have got Tudor March. And we went from that to the big, bigger sibling. The bigger sibling. Which I'm looking down at now. There's like a flute. There's, what is that? What would you call that? A fluted that's, 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 that's exterior? The, yeah, that's a fluted. Well, this, it's the... The angles are exactly the same from the the date just yeah. and uh, president. Come uh, on, Bezel. Yeah. where were we? What so did we do? We, 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 we were boring. greeted. No, no. Did you know what greeted happened? Greeted by name. Do you have, know what happened? Is he turned up and just went, "You know me." No, no. He, he actually did. He did though. <laughs> uh, there was a very nice chap. So although we didn't get hands on with watches in Rolex, we, we certainly saw some some cool pieces. And watched first, the movie as well. And watched the movie. Uh, that, that, that was, I actually quite like that movie. That, that was one big thing, guys. I have to highlight, and this is big props. You've been sitting on this. I've been sitting on this because it really excites me when watch brands are truthful about what they are offering. Uh, and Rolex, within all of the animations, the sides, and Rolex gets called out for this all the time the bad finishing of the hands. Uh. And in all of the com computer animations, they had bad finishing on the hands. And Rolex builds sports watches, they don't build. High horology. It's, it's not Patek, it's not AP. They aren't hand finished. And I love it when brands are honest the about what you're... The, the machine yeah. finishing, it's still there. And the fact that they actually, they would have they told... Kind of, they kind of turned it up. Yeah, they, they would have told the guy who created the animation, it has to show this. You know, what a difference. And this it shows about the show. This was an embracing show. It's yes. about watch yeah. lovers. And that's the thing that for me, I loved about this is it was... It was a show about watch lovers. It was, it, you know, you could turn up there and it wasn't no yeah. you're glad in. It yeah. was, hey, come and have a look. Do you, have you seen down here? Have you seen? Yeah. It was yes. so yes. nice. Yeah. He's so proud to put us in the theatre. Yeah. Uh, but that was because he was Adrian's mate. The other thing I want to say that you oh. mentioned about transparency. Oh my goodness. So the, the things that shocked me about Rolex, it, the experience of this was that finally there was some vintage pieces at an yes. officially branded Rolex space. I don't think I've seen that in 15 years of going to events. They've never, they've never deep dived into the. This is the story yeah. of the Daytona. So yeah. we went on the whole history from the Cosmograph, uh, the pre-Daytona naming, right through to the 
the, the anniversary piece. That's right. It's just been launched. The Lamorta edition. The thing that blew me away about transparency, you know how brands tend to selectively remember history. 1988, there was a, a little stand there. Zenith. I was wearing my Zenith El Primero Night Surfer. 1988, the tipping point. They call the moment that they had to call on the El Primero by Zenith as a tipping point for the Daytona. And they openly said for the next 12 years, or from 1988 till the early 2000s, we used the best high-frequency chronograph that existed at that time, the Zenith El Primero. However, they also, there's always a Rolex twist of, but, and I, was, I love this end to the little description, said, but, we changed it from five hertz to four hertz. <laughs> <laughs> they did a lot of customization. Was it over 300 adjustments or something they did? They, they fiddled with it. They, they yeah. Rolex did it. But I just love that not only did they mention it, they, they called it a climactic moment for the piece. They mentioned the brand by name. They didn't just say, we took a movement from another man. That's powerful, yeah. And I love yeah. how that lines up with the honesty of the, the render. Mm -hmm. And I love how that lines up with the welcoming vibe that you mentioned. And I want to say, Rolex, this is all we've wanted from you. Such a, such a good point. That is such a massive point. This is all we want. We, we, we know we can't I get the watches. I mean, no, no, no but, no, but this is it. And that's Rolex. what you buy watch. What with. you've done here is a oh. game changer. This, this shows you give a shit. And that's, it's like, it's like that unloving dad suddenly said that they love I you. Know. Actually my dad loves me. I love my dad, but but it's it's, it's like that. It's <laughs> like we've got a Christmas present. So after okay, years, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but can I just go awesome. back to you said Tudor, uh, Tudor, yeah. Tudor, not Tudor, Tudor. Yeah. They did not start. Yes, they did not. What about the crown? Disappointing. There was well. nothing Imagine if launched they'd have by the crown watch as well. That would have been. Can you? So like, so they did be, not start. Disappointing from from a product point of view. Yeah, but still, full mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, good, no, good that, effort. A, yeah. a, a, a honorable mention. Yes, oh, yes, nice, like that. that. DNS though, George, let's be fair, yeah. Yeah. DNS. So well, where do we go to next after the... D UN, okay, UN. So, so this was an interesting thing. I, 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 what, what, what's UN? U Ulysses Nardan. Oh, you said it. Um, so, so, uh, but, yep. so Ulysses Nardan, it was in these colorways. Yeah. So not We've the about seven time. George was starting to, he, he was like a kettle that was starting to boil. At mm -hmm. the you could hear that. No, no, he was just, I seen it on social. I thought, guys, <laughs> I'm going to show you something and you're going to, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to win. And we went in there and I was like, this is amazing. We got it on our wrist. I was like, hell yes, I'd done a selfie up on the <laughs> mirror and I'd done all those things. And then it was just one of those things where I was like, this is so cool. What do you think? It, look, it was just one of those moments where we weren't sure about the currency. We weren't mm. sure if it was endurance because when the price was released, uh, Zach and I had to check on time and tide. And I thought, Zach, you've, you've really messed this up. It's, you've got a wrong fact. It was 66,000 US dollars for this carbonium free. And, and it's a new material. It is a, it's a titanium with carbon, forged carbon, which, you know, maybe that's more expensive. It's the model without the crown on the side. So the, the way that you wind it is by twisting. As you can see on you know, the videos. Yes. Uh, there, there's a lot, there, there's, you know, it's a single axis freak movement, which is a, a wonderful thing. But the pricing just spoke to the worst of the industry right now, and it made me sad because I thought if that had been reasonably priced, I, I immediately felt deeply attracted to this watch with the colorway. Uh, I felt I, like it honestly, was the ultimate watch for us today. Completely agree. That, that's exactly when when George that's showed me the, the render, I thought, holy shit, that's sexy. That's when yeah, we saw it in person, holy shit, that's sexy, sexy. Yeah. But the the price, it's when you compare it to what other people are doing, it it doesn't make yeah, sense. We, uh, let's talk briefly about this. This is a moment in the industry of is it inertia when you when you reach a point where you've stopped going forward and you're about to start going back i'm not sure if that's the right word is that right i don't yeah. know but it's a point where prices are actually starting to go backwards mm -hmm. we have listed prices regular um retail recommended retail prices from big brands being reduced so we've reached that point of maximum silliness and we're starting to drop back down yeah and to me this was maybe the high water mark of maximum silliness because I asked about other models with a similar movement, 25,000. Again, this is a freak. It's not It's not a play watch. This is a, a serious is, piece of horology. It's a wonderful, aggressive- it's a, it, it was an icon by GPHG. Yes, he, mm -hmm. uh, the inventor of the freak was finally given their credit at this. So it's a, all of these things are great, but the pricing just felt 
completely absurd to me at that point and I, I didn't even want to see it. And yeah. it felt like that. This is the week where we hit that point of terminal velocity and we're coming so back. So this, this is an interesting point. So we're, we're, we're looking at crazy watches of, of the show. Yep. This is uh, uh, mechanically crazy. crazy. Yep. The price is crazy. But does that mean it sits high or does it sit low? Can I can I put a vote in on my Go side? Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, you move the Bulgari down and you've, you've put the Van Cleef up there. Yes. I, yep. My thing is, I see this, no matter what I see is above the ULC. Um, about the LUC. LUC, sorry, LUC. I see it just above the LUC. I, I love the LUC. I think it's amazing. I think the pricing's right on that. You knew it. This one. I don't know. There's something. So you're, you're still... ignoring the price and you're looking at the, I'm at the looking, design. I'm, and... I'm looking at all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that heart reaction. The, you did have it. The, the price this, this afterwards. Is a good point. The price afterwards was the oh uh, it totally you were shocked but too. it was out of my price point yeah it was out of the prices that i kind of go this is my wheelhouse so i was like i felt i i don't know i felt the pull for in the in the scenario i was like god i can't afford that yeah and that's but it, it's fine that's what some of these watches are they yeah, they are yeah. drop the mic watches i don't know how many edition it is i don't yeah. know anything about it but i just went i saw it with my eyes and there's a Japanese saying, doki doki, and it's when your heart beats a little bit faster and you fall in love with something. And I always say it's got to want to steal it, but in England, you can't say that because someone's going to steal it. Um, <laughs> but this, for me, was that kind of reaction. Okay, and then I have to when agree you with guys you. did a Debbie Downer on me and just went, oh, on price, then yeah. I started kind of... Yeah. Let me ask the people, let's bring the people into this. Do you also have that... It's a little bit of a reflux feeling where you just burp and you get that acid taste in your mouth. Oh my okay. god. How does that connect? I, I get that, the overpriced reflux. Oh, right. Or I walk into a, something and ask about price and I just get that little burp of just like if, if, acidic and then I suddenly just but Andrew, don't, don't, if they, don't lose if, the pain. Yeah, but Andrew, if they justified, if they gave you the full list of what that, why that well, cost you. No, no, so no, let's, no, let's, no, let's, no, let's, let's, no, let's remove the price. I'm let's fo 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 yeah. focus on the watch. Yeah. So what you, you place it in position four. Three. Van Cleef, uh, Bulgari. Three. Uh, position three. three. Holy shit. Would you agree with that? No. Forget no. about price. No, well, now we're just talking about the Freak. And and frankly, I, I think the Freak is a mechanical marble, and I think it stands alone. It, it's it's had a huge award bestowed on it this week. Yeah. But I no, I don't. I, I would put it mid-tier lower. Because the Freak is not a new thing, and it's just had its zenith at the GPSC. You were part of that. I think yeah. you probably voted for it. So this isn't the moment for the freak here. I think this is still the moment for BCA, and I still think it's a moment for for Bulgari. So I'm really, I'm, I'm no, really. No, no, I, the Bulgari is about this. Okay. I'm really conflicted because I I agree. If we go back to the original emotion that I had when I saw the watch, I thought, holy shit, that is awesome. Yeah. Love it. Want it. Um, and you're watching it now, going, that is awesome. It's just, I'm just, are you getting my reflux or not? And so, so where do you place it? If you've seen mids, let's, 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 let's give me watches that are sitting above, between. Uh, above LUC? Above, above, above. Remember. Uh, it's definitely more contemporary and the colorway is better than LUC. LUC is straight up classic watch making. Okay. Doesn't so, so we've got so Van Cleef, Bulgari, LUC. So, so it, it's where George says. Yeah. Okay. So Van Cleef, Bulgari. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm strong I'm new to that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much covered what we did on the outside the next part is kind of batshit crazy it's batshit crazy it's yeah. it's more typical arcade. trade show yeah. environment so we went inside this massive building but it's quite deceiving because it looks like it'd be quite a small element of the show but you go inside it, it just like, keeps going let me give you a little flashback two years ago inside that fair were a lot of obscure high-end independent brands and it was really fun but you're discovering louis era you're discovering resins you're discovering uh, Artia, these little brands. This year, Tag Heuer, Breitling, Breitling, uh, Frederic Constant, Doxa, Frederic Constant, the Grand Seiko. Big brands are all Grand Seiko. They're all jammed into this space, and it's it's quite a frenetic place. To it was quite a bizarre because I wasn't imagining to see them in those spaces. No, I mean that was what was the most bizarre thing. You know what else I didn't imagine seeing? What? Watch celebrities. Yeah. Influencers. People that make our hearts. Believe it or yeah. Not. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know how much I love you. I'm like, 
Yeah, that's how much I love Andrew Morgan. I yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah, what a dude. So we bumped into Andrew Morgan from yeah. Watchfinder. Watch we, we, we did want him to come and join our, our team. We, we tried. To, I, and, and we couldn't afford him. He's too pricey. He's too Actually, pricey. No, I shouldn't be giving... I, I don't give you the finger. I give you the finger. Because <laughs> I had a booty in five seconds. And we also saw... I mean... Someone that was wearing the, hearts, used to wear the t-shirts of this. Fluttering hearts yes. one thing. But Adrian's trousers just started to move around. And I'm like, I, something's I, happening. It's like a water diviner, something, and then James Stacy walks up. And You're making it weird again. again. He's such a dude, though. Tandy's shaking. And look, it's explosive. No, no. <laughs> hey, you guys are making it weird now. How can we make it weird? Uh, uh, like a, a, a high school, I just told my friends that I fancy that girl and they push us together. <laughs> Fuck's sake. No, but that's it. So I, I started off with the Grey NATO, and it was a thing that kind of brought me out of this shell of just enjoying watches on my own. And so when I met you, I was like, oh my God, it's fucking him. And I, yeah, it was really weird. Right well, now. look, it's rolled around the other way because I love the show. Oh, oh, dude, thank you. That's, that's, that's massive. I, 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 yeah. listen, I listen and watch to so little that's out there, but you guys are, uh, uh, I can't miss. That's so amazing. That's, that's it. One brand that kind of like, I, because I was desperate to see it, was the um, ID. ID Geneva or Geneve, as he keeps on going. I'm like, British language. <laughs> anyway, it's called English, but anyway. Um, but what was amazing is seeing this watch in the flesh. I thought it was going to be a chunky monkey, and it wasn't. It was very thin, and in their kind of, uh, what's the best way of describing it? Their ethos about recycling and everything, from collar to cuff to from start to finish, everything about their brand is, is on point. That was something it's that called, I was this really... This one with the regenerative skin that Leo DiCaprio invested in. But not the one that we filmed. We filmed yeah. another one, yeah. but yes. Okay. Yeah. So and that was the dark. Cool. Adrian, anything jump out? Yeah, two jumps down for me. Uh, Vedra Constant. Oh, so, talk, yes. about, talk about so, yeah. Talking about pricing, I feel like these guys, uh, the pricing and finishing, kind of on, on, not on the show part level, but within that mindset, that kind of the vision of just beautiful looking watches legitimately stunning watches at a decent price at a fair price and the one that really stood to me i think we've got different watches that stood out so i fell in love with this manufactured tourbillon with a meteorite dial yeah. but on the bag i mean from the front this is stunning but it's the bag which just gets me going it's it the hand movement hammered. hand hammered yeah. they literally no, that, sat that there with, a, with a little a little chisel mallet thingy and a hammer <laughs> and it's crazy. What do you think of it? You think about two, three, four, five, maybe thousand at the most. These are forty-four thousand dollars yeah. But Adrian and I were on different sides of the fence. I, I was looking at a rose gold highline petrol calendar with a turbine on. I, I, I like that as well. But, I, but and the I don't really way. like to build. the highline shape is really lovely. So again, look, we're playing way outside of FC's price point. But the point I was trying to make with this watch was that this really gives you everything: manufacture complications and a turbine at a price that is still competitive for what it is, but it's more about what it represents. And that is FC, like Tudor, if you want, give me one reason why Tudor's risen in the stakes in the last five years, they haven't aggressively raised their prices. Yeah. And that makes them stand alone and FC's the same. So that was great. George, anything else out for you? Oh, the, yes, there was two. Uh, no, no, actually there was two, there was two. One of them was, um, this, uh, it was a GPHG winner and Modeless. it is, a, no, it is a clock oh. that you make yourself. And it was oh, absolutely right. amazing to see us again. And she came in and discussed her, her watch with us. So yeah. that's all now. That's okay. awesome. The Doxa is, oh, I, I was so happy to see because as much as I love Doxa, I love Doxa deeply, but I wanted them to do something. It's like, guys, yeah. we've seen that shape at the sub 300. We know the story, we know the orange, it's time. And it happened, it finally happened. And they look, they've, they've trodden a well-worn path ceramic bezel, but it's a matte ceramic bezel. It's a sexy matte it's, ceramic it's, bezel. It's, it's, it, and it even looks. the highlights with the white, with the blue, with the blue, with the blue, with the Some of them are embargoed, so we're probably gonna have to pixelate some, but there was, they've done one with a blue mother of pearl dial as well. Which, yeah, that was. Again, it's a, it's sort of a, now you think about it, you go, that's a total obvious no-brainer, but Doxic killed it. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Um, the other thing is, because we wanted to raise the bar on watches. Yes. I'm going to get back to the GPHG one. They had the AP there. They had the AP sitting there that was this, the winner of, overall winner. Of, oh, the um, Universal? Yeah. Oh, my God. And it was sitting there. Where was that? It's just on the left-hand side. I, I, In there? Yeah. So 
So Marcus and I, whilst what? you were you were kind of talking to Great Nato and you were talking to the best around Drew, I I basically went with Marcus and went and looked at the AP. And it was amazing. So the universal, this is the So so I'm gonna bring, bring that into this ever. game yeah. of yeah. which one raised it. Come on. Yeah. Have well, I now kind of brought something this So is, so where, where do you rank it? I've, uh, I've not seen this watch, so I'm okay, just gonna have to well, go by yours. This for me, I would I would put it a, a, above everything. Now. Wow. But, like, I just but the look, look, the look. Right, let, the let me look. have a look. What, what's it called? The Universal. Oh, so okay, I, fine. I, I think this should be overall. It's kind of the dang. Adrian, it's it's just one GPSC Aggie door. It doesn't. Yeah, need, it, it doesn't need our seal of approval, it does it? Need well, nothing no. needs our seal of approval. Yeah, this is I mean, true. Yeah, who cares about us? <laughs> but anyway. Universal, it's a great watch. But that's okay, the, okay, I stand, cool. I stand yeah. corrected. So is that everything? No. We as as we walked out, we saw Norcane, and they've done a super stealthy black wild one. We saw oh, a gold, hello. we saw the first gold uh, Norcane. Gold and black. Gold and mm. black. Gold that looks good. special. Yep. And that was us on the way oh, no, out. No, no, no. There was also a blue one because there was this uh, we had one each. blue. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is, we had one each. And it kept on going. And Adrian, I think you tried to nick the black one off me. There's something about all black, just yeah, no. pure stealth. No, that's, that's not you. That's it should be all grey. I'm, I'm boring. <laughs> exactly. I'd, to, if it was all grey, I'd be all over it. You're absolutely right. There is one story about Norcane that's cool, which is that the teal one, the blue one, uh, when I went on this MBNF trip with you into the desert where we drove June we probably should have. Camels. Yeah. We, we, the HM11 is their new release. That's a whole absolutely other world of crazy. Amazing. It's it's a watch that's designed based on the. It's, it's a watch inspired by a house, and it looks like this crazy '60s house. Different story, amazing watch. But Max Pusser said that he bought this teal wild one, and I was just so shocked that someone at that level still yeah. watches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah that blew my mind. Jim watch my beat the watch. That's my holiday watch. So I, I feel quite chuffed by that. Yeah, like, that was pretty cool. One of us. Okay, guys. Look, the thing is, in there was MBNF, and for me. I believe that these guys should be in the rating. I know that this is batshit crazy. Holy shit, that's such a good point. We're talking about batshit yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you two went on an event that I got FOMO on. <laughs> and just, like, for me, this is one of those that should be up there. So we're talking and should it be thousand Swiss francs. Yeah, but don't worry about that. But, but Which is like just a point of reference. Yeah, but this this whole thing is, it's... M and F always deliver yeah. on batshit crazy. And Does I, it go above the bulgari or I, below the bulgari? I think this. I think it wins. For, for me, I, I, I think it goes top. Oh because yes. Th th there's one big factor about this watch, and that is very wearable. Usually, M B and F watches are yeah. absolutely yeah. massive, yeah. and this is. Uh, what was it 42 millimeters? Yeah. But I love how so it wearable. rotates. It it's, rotates. It's, it's, such I a, mean, that's it, how you it, wind it's, it. It's a very weird watch because you kind of go the hell but this criteria batshit crazy yeah so how does the mbnf work what does it do there are four rooms one of them actually t takes the temperature mm. this has a barometer that you can order but it's the ambient Celsius, temperature not your skin temperature which is very complex yeah so there's an actual barometer inside the case that takes the temperature and you can order it in fahrenheit or celsius yep. so it has that it has power reserve it has time and then there's a sapphire crown as the fourth room and then there's a flying tourbillon in the center underneath a knee dome. So that is madness. The, the thing that blew my mind with the watch is that you wind it by turning the whole All watch the head, the whole head. Yeah. But when you wind a watch, you've got such a tiny uh, uh, the diameter to wind. Yeah. And so the gearing has to be such that it, you're winding the, 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 the mainspring, but you're putting so much little input in because yeah. you have such yeah. a small grip. When you're turning a whole watch, one 45 degree turn adds 75 minutes of power. I think it blows everything else out of the water. So if you're both ready, I, I still want my VCA uh, bridge kissing and setting the time for the bridge to kiss and on demand. I still think that's... That no, we are both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, do you agree with us or do you agree with him? Yeah. Which um, watch would you say is the most batshit crazy? So answer in the comments. So God, the, the big question is, would you come back to Dubai Watch Week? Hell yes. You would? Would yeah. you come back? I, I so, so what, what would have been, what, what would be the, let's say the selling points, what are the yeah. selling points of Dubai Watch Week to you? Okay, I think it's the, the atmosphere, the fact that it's not transactional, it's not that aggressive salesy vibe, yeah, and mate. I think it is the fact that, I mean, George was a speaker here, talking about... George is actually a VIP of Dubai not Watch to, Week. Not to bespoke or not to bespoke, so there are topics that are relevant, 
out that are interesting. Go and so, check it out. It's like a TED Talks. Go and check that out. Yeah, so there's TED Talks to attend as well as many of the brands in Forum this, Talks on this much friendlier ground. What about you? Yeah, I'd, I'd 100 come back again. This has been the most welcoming, uh, most engaging. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact you, you can just walk into the booths and you, you don't have someone out the front ticket. Are you, are you, is your name on the list? Yeah. Are you going to come in? Like, no, it's well, we're in George Bamford. You just yeah. flash a, a jacket and just walk yeah. in. This has been absolutely amazing. Look, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to us. Yes, sir. Subscribe to the podcast. Watch, comment. Lo we podcast love you. Week. And this is only possible because of you. Why did we come here? Why are we coming back to another fair? It's because it's you. We want to show you our inside thing, our inside vibe that we're right, getting. Insides. Yeah. And that's it. Guys, follow us on Instagram, about.effing.time. Check out our podcast. There'll be a link in the description down below. Jump over to our website, aboutEffingTime.net. And these we've got an event. We've got uh, an event. We've got, got an event. event. Oh, this is December an event. 13th. We <laughs> have an event. Yeah. Come celebrate Christmas with us in London on December the 13th. Sign up for it. It's Please sign up. It's We've got limited spaces because we can't get Wembley. And a special thing we're doing on the night is a very low key, very about a thing time punk community awards. Community choice awards to be yep. precise. We are asking you questions about your favorite watches of the year. They're all flavored with an about a thing time tone. Just throw your, throw your choices in there. And on the night, we will have the envelopes for the winners. It is going to be super fun. It's going to be, we're not going to know who wins on the night. Yep. It's going to be live as hell. It'll, it'll be end up being the Christmas episode, but if you're there, you'll see it'll happen live. Amazing. Cool. We'll see you guys soon.